In this tutorial, I'll look at the custom anchors code snippet. I'll go through the JavaScript in detail and I'll modify the script to experiment with mixing 2D and 3D on the same canvas. The starting point for this tutorial is all the files needed to run the custom anchors code snippet on the local server all the files inside a folder called My Anchors, which is inside the Blend for Web SDK folder. How to get to this point is the same for all the basic code snippets, and I covered it in detail in my tutorial on the instancing code snippet. Click the link for that tutorial. I will go over it again very quickly in this tutorial. The common library files that you need are b for w min.js, uranium.js and uranium.js mem and they can be copied and pasted from the blend for web SDK in the deploy folder apps common. The HTML file and the JavaScript file are copied from the view code window. Highlight right click select all, right click copy and paste into a text editor and when in the text editor delete full because that's the old name of the library file and save as I saved as anchors.html do the same for the JavaScript file select all and copy and paste into a text editor where you need to delete the path to the JSON file. All that I'm highlighting now can be deleted, although you will need to put an opening quote back in, and save as customanchors.js. The other two files, the JSON file and the bin file, are the 3D scene exported from Blender, the file can be found in the SDK folder, the Blender folder, Code Snippets, Custom Anchors, File Export, Blend for Web JSON, and Export to the My Anchors folder and Export. Once the files are in place, and Blender is running with Blend for Web as the renderer. This is the web address to use to test if it all works. The local server points to your Blend for Web SDK folder. In there, there is a folder My Anchors, and this will load the file anchors.html. Copying and pasting the web address into a browser, I use Firefox, you should get the anchors seen. Now that the code snippet is running locally, we can edit the JavaScript file using a text editor. I use Notepad++, but any text editor will do. Now we can edit the script. I'm going to change the label on the Taurus object to hello world. When we save the JavaScript and reload the web page, we should see the change. Now I'm going to go through the JavaScript code in detail. The register function is used to register a new module, and this is the new module's name, custom anchors main. Modules provide a set of functions exported for general use. This module exports one function, the init function. The module definition starts at this opening bracket and finishes at this closing bracket. And this line combines requiring the new module with calling its init function. What does the init function do? Well, as the name suggests, it initializes the application. It links to
to the HTML element that contains the canvas that the 3D scene is rendered to and it sets the name of the callback function, the function that is called when the initialization process is complete. The init callback function does three things. It sets the properties of the torus label. It loads the 3D scene that was exported from Blender in the JSON format and it sets the name of a callback function that is called when the scene has finished loading. The load callback function sets the properties of the cylinder label and adds it to the canvas. So we have one function that sets up the label for the torus, one function that sets up the label for the cylinder, even though it's a cone, and if we look at the scene, there are three labels. So what is going on? We need to look at the Blender file. I'm selecting the empty object next to the cube and looking at its object properties. The empty object is of anchor type annotation and the other two empties are of the other types, custom element and generic. The three types offer different levels of ease of use and flexibility. Annotation is the easiest to use. It requires no code, but it has no flexibility. Generic requires the most code and is the most flexible. Custom element requires less code than generic, but it is less flexible. Type annotation I covered in a previous tutorial. It uses the title and description meta tags. I'm pasting into the description field and clicking fast preview. We only get one label because we haven't run the JavaScript code snippet. We get white text on a black background with three rounded corners and glow. And if we click the label, the title field is replaced by the description field. But we cannot change the style and we cannot change the behavior. In the script, the first anchor to be set up is the torus anchor. It is of type custom element and the ID must be set of the HTML element that will be anchored to the empty. In the script, this is where the new HTML element is created. It is a span element. A span tag is a container tag for a section of text. And this is where we link the HTML element generated by the script to the 3D object in the Blender scene. Obviously the IDs must match. These lines are where the text style properties are set. The W3Schools website lists many of the style properties that can be set. Visibility hidden keeps the element hidden until the scene is loaded. Inner HTML inserts the text into the span tag. Append child adds the span tag to the body of the HTML document. And finally, the 3D scene exported from Blender in the JSON format will be loaded. And because of the Blend for Web settings, the HTML text will be anchored to the empty object in the scene. The load callback function is run once the scene is loaded and once the scene is loaded, the camera controls can be enabled. The next section of code looks very similar to the code we've just looked at for a custom element anchor, but the ID of the HTML element is not linked through Blender for a generic anchor. 
so we have to get a pointer to the object in the scene whose name is sill anchor, which is the empty. Now we can use a function from the anchors module of the blend for web API. The first parameter passed to the function is the 3D object. The second parameter is a function and the function is called when the position of the HTML needs to be updated. Get element by ID returns a pointer to the HTML element so that we can update its X and Y location. Looking at the altered browser scene, I have experimented with the script, adding images, but the Blender scene is exactly the same. So what did I do to change the Taurus label into a stickman? I changed the span tag to a div tag, which is a container element that you can set the dimensions of and you can set a background image. I didn't want any foreground text, so the two slashes comments out the text line and the text styling lines. With the cylinder anchor, I've added a few more style properties and I've kept the foreground text the static text is part of the background image. That's the end of the tutorial. I'll put all the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website. Click the link or the eye icon. If you'd like to subscribe, click the link or the stickman. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.